ask you in the communication skills about uh, okay it's broken machine what is this so is this okay just a minute And come. I think I muted or is okay? Yeah. Not okay. No, it is okay. We can hear you very well. All right, okay. So it is history taken from a patient. Uh, his wife found uh, the patient just admit to the hospital and they take a sample and they found malignant ascites. And in this hospital, the CT is not working. And the query here uh, is the patient need CT, no need for CT, so uh, his wife is angry. Uh, when we go to the scenario, of course, his longest scenario, Mr. Gray wife come today to meet consultant, Dr. Mann, uh, to discuss husband case diagnosed as malignant ascites. Uh, you are uh, court training CT here is court training or junior doctor come in behalf of consultant as he's an emergency operation the patient admitted two days ago and uh, they tell him after fine needle aspiratus cytology or aspiratus cytology they have ascites and this is malignant and some of the doctor tell him he is in in the stage or terminal stage, the patient not to smoke, not drink alcohol, and uh, one of the staff told the patient yesterday he's advanced cancer and uncurable. Uh, the patient brother live in Australia and just have a coronary bypass for a few months, and you can start the conversation, Dr. Timan. Okay, could I start? Yes, can. Uh, okay. Uh, hello. Good morning. I am Dr. Iman. I am a SHO doctor working for Mr. Man. Um, uh, I am. So where is Mr. Man now? Why he's not coming? Uh, I am sorry, but uh, Mr. Man has an uh, emergency surgery uh, operation, and he can't uh, come and uh, go for discussion with you. And sorry, this is operation is important than my husband's condition. Um, uh, actually, uh, the, the operation Mr. Man go for is an emergency condition, and it can't be wait. Uh, oh, right. until just until her, she can like abdominal aortic aneurysm or big artery rupture or okay. What else? Okay. Uh, and then I will uh, ask her about what do you know so far about your husband's condition? Yeah, I am. I am worried because he just admitted two days ago. And just taking one test done, and the one of your doctors, one of the team, tell him he has advanced cancer. So I just need uh, to know uh, how it comes, how to comes he know from simple test have a have a cancer. So uh, I think it is not not good. Are you sure this test is correct? Uh, firstly, we will do uh, we will do uh, a CT scanning. Uh, no, no, he don't do CT scan. He's uh, not see a CT is a court training doctor. You are the court, you are the CT court training. Okay. Okay. Uh, it it uh, he will have an imaging investigation. No, no. Are you sure that he have a cancer? Uh, until now, we can't confirm until uh, go for uh, an imaging like a CT. No, no. Are you sure that you have a cancer? Is this test is, is sure that you have a cancer or not? Um, they take a sample uh, just to test and found and say they have a cancer and say it is advanced. How come? Uh, it's a very, uh, yes, can confirm that he has a cancer. How, how can confirm? Because he has, uh, it denotes that there is a malignant cell, uh, so it may right, uh, so it is good for malignancy, but for, from where this uh, cell come? You don't uh, tell me what type of cancer? We can't uh, told uh, here until uh, we go for all investigation and the serial examination. So, uh, oh, 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 so you don't know the origin? Yes. All right, okay. So why the doctor tell him this is advanced cancer and he don't know the origin? Um, uh, 
because if, if there is a, an ascites and the fluids inside the abdomen, uh, so uh, it not present the patient has may have a, a advanced of his case. But until, right. uh, until okay. now, we can confirm that. All right. Okay. So back to CT. Uh, uh, some of the doctors say he will do CT, and uh, the CT is broken. Broken here means that it is not working. So the CT is not pro is not working. So can we transfer him to another hospital to do CT? What is your opinion? Uh, we we can do that, but firstly we can try. So if you, can, if you know if you know what is the type of cancer. It is different in the treatment or not? Yes, it will be different according to the type of the cancer. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, we speak about this later. All right. So, are you sure that is no cure or have a cure? Um, it, it, it will depend on his condition and according to the, the tumor is advanced or not. Okay, so what is the treatment option you suggest? Um, I suggest that the patient may have a, um, a, an operation uh, after uh, a intervention with a multidisciplinary team and other specialist doctor. Uh, we can give him the patient if he has a pain, can uh, treat that. Uh, and no, the I think that it is curable or not curable cancer? Uh, it will, uh, depending uh, on the, uh, in the investigation, you will know. All right. So, shall I call his brother to come from Australia? He just uh, have coronary bypass. Shall I ask him to come? Uh, it will be... Uh, uh, Australia will live in Malaysia, for example, not in Egypt. Okay. okay. Uh, it will be Australia confidential. Okay. It will, be confidential. it will be confidential for the patient to, uh, to decide if they to told his brother or not. And he... No, what is your opinion, doctor? Okay, if he accepted, uh, you should tell his doctor because he has an uh, uh, according to, you, to his situation. Yeah. Okay, his all right. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Uh, Iman, so I, we finish. So first, uh, when I ask you, are you sure? Of course, fine needle aspiratus cytology to take a cell and under microscope to know it is adenocarcinoma or whatever, so it is the shortest. Okay. Uh, it is advanced because the patient have malignant ascites. Uh, different in treatment and the cure or not cure, you still hesitated and it is not good. Because from your opinion, if this patient have malignant ascites, it means that it is advanced case or early case? It will be advanced case. Okay, okay. suppose the origin is from any organ apart from the colon can have uh, obstruction. So, for example, if you come from cancer of liver or something, can I do surgery? Uh, no, uh, the surgery will be uh, only palliative. So, when I ask you about different modality of treatment, so what's suppose your answer? We, we can uh, do a surgery to uh, palliative. Uh, no, no, usually you, if the patient have advanced cancer like malignant ascites, is the surgery is benefit? Suppose this patient have hepatoma and the malignant ascites or ovarian tumor and the malignant ascites. So this surgery of value or no value? No, no value. No value. So surgery is, is not is, uh, is con not contraindicated, but not wise. Uh, when I ask you, uh, so this is why different treatment we usually give palliative treatment in the form of chemotherapy. When I ask you, it is about uh, CTE. Uh, you don't give me sharp answer. Is CT of value or not? Um, yes, it will be uh, important. So what is the value of CT if you know the origin? Because now the CT is not working. You can ask me, so I tell you, uh, it can improve the by uh, within two weeks or one week. So this one week is make difference in this patient uh, station, uh, condition or not? No. No, okay, so CT of no value. After that, when I ask about his brother in Australia, yeah. so we don't ask the patient. He need to ask you just one question. If this patient in critical situation or advanced, he can die soon or after a few months, so it is better to bring his brother. So what is supposed to tell her? Okay, that's fine. I will... Uh, uh, um, 
Th this will be uh, good for uh, the patient. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, the answer, yes. It is better to ask his brother to come to see him because maybe his life span or expectancy of life is limited maybe a few months because this is like end stage. This is, can be cancer, uh, pancreas, or ovary or something. Mm -hmm. So what I need to concentrate in this scenario, first, it is a very poor prognosis because advanced stage of cancer. Only hope, only hope, because some student is have some debate if this lymphoma, for example, so chemotherapy can improve, if it TB of, uh, can improve, but of course we know the cancer, but because we don't say it is type of cancer, so the only curable cancer is lymphoma, but usually malignant ascites is not with lymphoma. Uh, more investigation to know the primary tumor of no value, just for my interest. We plan for CT scan, but unfortunately the machine is not working, so no problem. Because not affect the prognosis. If we know the origin, is not affect the prognosis, not affect the line of treatment. CT scan machine is not working. If the hospital has only one machine, yes, can transfer him to nearby hospital to do CT, not necessary because it is not affect the prognosis and treatment because the treatment usually in installation of chemotherapy interoperatory. So what we will do, palliative chemo, if we do surgery, it is not curative, it is palliative surgery, so it's not wise. Uh, short and longer term management, usually chemotherapy. Uh, of course, uh, the patient usually in this situation is very angry, uh, but you need to accept her anger is. Uh, it is the end, it is better to tell her, of course, the consultant after finish, you miss that, after he finish the operation or later may make, make appointment with you or we can, the secretary contact the two to call you. All right, and of course, we make a discussion by multiple disciplinary team. Okay, uh, so again, uh, although this is common station, but in this scenario, the patient usually the actor, I don't know what is in your country, but usually the angry, the angry. Uh, but all concern, what you need uh, to know here, to, to give to her that it is advanced case, although it is simple test, though it is not a tumor marker, but malignant cell or malignant ascites, it means bad prognosis, the patient is not good. So uh, whatever we make, surgery is not curable, curative, so nothing to be done. CT of no value, a post bond for one week, no problem, but it's just uh, what's called sorting the patient. At the end, don't forget to Eman to summarize and thank the patient. And of course, in this situation, again, sorry for the consultant. I uh, He will contact you later or secretary contact you later. Uh, when I start, and uh, where is Mr. Mann? So it is important to, to explain to the patient this is urgent operation, like big artery, like abdominal aortic aneurysm or aorta of all people know aorta is a rupture or impending rupture. So it is uh, emergency operation, so we must act. In. Okay. Any comment, any question? Uh, this is a very good station, Professor Shireen, and you did act uh, the actor very well. You played the angry patient. I found... No, I don't accept in angry, but in, in some countries we have a, a very, very angry patient. Yes, <laughs> in the United Kingdom, they get an actor with license, and he really is an angry. I remember... Um, another scenario with an angry patient and the Egyptian doctor told her, can you please have a seat? I will explain to you. He said, no. I she said, no, I will not have a seat. Just let me know. And she was very angry. And at the end, the Egyptian doctor told her, I will not tell you anything unless you sit down. And he failed in this station <laughs> because uh, our Egyptian doctor, like Dr. Iman, doesn't know how to deal with angry patients. She is weak. She is afraid of the exam. How can I deal with it? So you are assisted, Dr. Iman, by two things. A lay examiner, which is your body language, how to bring the tone of conversation down, and what is the distance to stay, and always be logic. If the, can you please have a seat? I'll explain it to you. No, I will not have a seat. Okay, you continue. I'm very sorry for this. Uh, I'm very sorry for your husband. Can I help in any way? Do you like a glass of water? You take the tone down. This is the lay examiner assessment. Professor Shireen will assess you from knowledge. 
knowledge. Because you did mention yes. something wrong about knowledge. Uh, is it definite cancer? This is a knowledge question. Yes, if you see cells of adenocarcinoma, it is positive for cancer. Secondly, CT essential? No, it is not essential. Thirdly, how to deal with someone who is far away because this is end stage disease, he might die. And this is very important in the United Kingdom to appreciate the relative. So um, I'm sure you got a lot of training with this station and I'm sure next time you'll know this is an angry patient station. I know how to deal with it and uh, hopefully your performance will be much better next time, inshallah. But it was excellent station, Professor Shri. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next station and also common and uh, this station is about a uh, female and she is divorced and her husband play in the guard and uh, what happens, they have rupture of injury with spleen. So you see the screen or I need to share? Uh, yes, yes, you can, can see, see the screen. screen, yes, you can see it very okay. well. Okay, so the child, his name is Smith, nine years, admitted for splenectomy, it is urgent splenectomy. Uh, the consent signed by his father or the doctor tell his father about the splenectomy. His mother coming angry at this time, child in theater, and the both parents are separated, and child father is drink a lot of alcohol. Uh, this is from the history from the mother. So anyone can start. Uh, this is idea. Okay, if anyone wants to take the station, he can raise their hand, and we take priority who raise his hand first. So, okay. uh, we have uh, a lot. Dr. Iman <laughs> raise their hand again. Okay. Okay, we have Nabhan also. Which uh, one Nabhan, is? okay. I'm not sure who have raised his hand first, but uh, okay, so up Dr. to you. Nabhan. So usually, usually what I see, because I see in, in many countries, but I don't know what is Egyptian actor do, uh, this uh, the patient is standing and very angry and shouting. And say, first she start ask Dr. Nabhan, where is my baby? Can I, uh, okay, and she don't sit down. So what do you tell her? Uh, I just tell her to sit down so we can... Uh, no, he cannot sit down, I need to see my baby. So I can see him now or not? Uh, okay, he is in a very emergency right now in the theater. No, no, it is not an emergency. He's in theater. He's in theater. Uh, okay, he's in theater. So uh, I can just explain you uh, what happened to him. Uh, All right. So first, you tell her she is in theater, and so it, it is difficult to go to theater. So. Uh, she sat down. But if you don't tell her anything, she, she has expected that her, her baby is died or her child is died. So she stands, so ask her to come down. If the patient is standing, don't sit down except after the patient sit down. Okay. okay? So we don't able to see your baby or your child now simply because in theater. All right. Okay. So uh, just tell me what happened. Why is he need to remove the spleen? Uh, okay, are you the uh, mother of Smith? Yes. Um, so, okay, uh, what happened to your child? Uh, I'm sorry that we, we couldn't treat you uh, sooner. Uh, your child just arrived us. I see that his uh, husband, he signed the consent. So, uh, why you don't wait, wait uh, till I come to sign the consent? Uh, because your child was in a very serious condition, he had what we call a rupture spleen. A rupture spleen is... Uh, but uh, but uh, I have the... Uh, uh, his, uh, we are divorced, and his father be divorced because he's drank a lot of alcohol. So, uh, you take the consent, uh, when you take the consent, or your friend will take the consent, he was drunking? I will check that. No, no, not to check. What is your diplomatic answer? So we tell we tell this later. Okay. Okay. What else? All right. So how to know this is spleen is rupture? Uh, okay, we have done a, a fast scan, which is called. A, what does fast scan mean? It's a, fo a, it's a focal focal assisted, yeah, focal assisted sonography of trauma. Okay, so fast scan, and I have to confirm uh, that it is rupture. I see that we have grade of rupture, like grade one, two, three, four, five. How to know that? Yeah, by spleen, by CT. By CT, okay. So, uh, which grade you need to remove the spleen? Uh, 
Yeah, uh, grade four and grade five, or if there five, is five. Five, okay. So you know that it is grade four or five. So they need to remove the spleen. So what is spleen, by the way? Yes, yeah, spleen is an organ found in the left side of the body, and it's it is what side? Right or left? On the, on the left side of the body. What What is the function of it? Yeah, it's important in a player role in a body defense mechanisms against uh, some organisms. And what your organism? Some, uh, usually encapsulated organisms and gram-negative organisms. All right. So clinically, when you examine my child, how to know that have rupture, have this rupture, please? Yeah, he had bruises over his left side, and uh, he has pain on his left side of his body. But uh, my husband tell he have no ecchymosis, but he say he have fracture ribs. So if he have fracture rib, like nine, last of ribs, like 9, 10, 11. So what, it is a fracture rib, not a spleen. Yeah, the spleen uh, lies just uh, behind the ribs. So it might be affected oh, by that. Okay, so how to know that it is in hemorrhage? Yeah, as we have uh, withdrawn some... Uh, uh, some blood tests from him and his hemoglobin uh, showed us that uh, he, uh, the hemoglobin is dropping. It's dropping, okay. So, if this is after we remove the spleen, so he become handicapped or the, like unable to go to school and have no activity? I uh, know he can uh, do uh, his activity after uh, his recovery, as a, uh, after his full recovery, but he uh, must get some uh, vaccines, as these vaccines will help him against the uh, organism that the spleen was defending against. Okay, so uh, he need to take antibiotic after surgery or not? Uh, yes, he will take antibiotics for at least uh, one month after the month. Uh, But uh, are you sure that it is one month, doctor? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. Like about one month, a few months, I don't really remember. All right, but, but it is logic to give him for one month. Okay, in the long term, have any effect? A long term antibiotics? No, long term, long term, long run effect of removal of spleen. He can marry, he can do his activity. Like yes, he can. yes, he can marry and uh, do his activity. And uh, if he just have uh, for a good recovery, he can just do uh, all his works uh, normally. Okay. All right. So after that, summarize and thank you here. So first, when I ask you, is her husband, okay? Of course, you are not who signs the consent, but in any hospital, if I ask, when you take the consent from Mr. X, he's drunking. So what is the correct answer? Yeah, this is a really hard question. No, not hard. Because if the patient is drunking, we don't allow to take the consent from him. Because one of the, to sign the consent, you have the capacity to sign the consent. Capacity to sign the consent, you must be in, uh, oriented, not drunking. Okay, of course, we don't assess mental status, but it, of course, it is not drunking. So, usually, uh, we have this scenario in exam. So, actually, Dr. Nabhani speak to me, so I actually, yes. I don't think the consent, the consent is taken by Dr. Muhammad. So, but uh, whatever who takes the consent, we don't take a consent from the patient have uh, drunking or not well oriented. So it means that, that your husband who signs the consent is fully conscious. This is first. The second, okay. even even if he don't present, this is emergency operation. We don't need the consent from the father. We don't need consent from the mother because in emergency situation we can do it by formal consent or consent signed by the consultant. So even we don't need the consent. Suppose his hus your husband is not present. We don't ask you about this. Apart from his okay. drinking and all this. All right. Uh, second, uh, I ask you about antibiotic for one month. This is not logic at all. Antibiotic here is given prophylaxis. It is just three doses because it is clean operation. In very, very, very old books, when I was young, we give antibiotic forever or antibiotic for nine months or antibiotic for long period. And this is now is historical. 
But I found one station, I was in India, all the students say you give antibiotic forever, which is not logic at all. Okay. Okay. Of, okay. of course, the CT is, uh, is the easy way. I just review, uh, to review her question, how do you know to have to remove the spleen? We know it from the fast scan and CT. Uh -huh. Uh, of course, uh, remove damaged part or stop bleeding. Sometimes the partial splenectomy, sometimes, but not routine. Uh, nothing happened without the spleen. Uh, long term, give vaccination, yes. Uh, no alternative. Uh, if you ask his father is ranking at time of consent, of course, no. Because if he is not oriented, we don't take a consent. Maybe the patient hemoglobin drop, fast scan or ultrasound. Uh, last question, usually the mother ask you, I will ask you, Dr. Nabhan, the, this girl or lady ask, where I, I, will I will stay? When you will stay? Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you will stay with her at the recovery room after just... Uh, no, 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 not recovery. No, it is the waiting room in front of the theater. Okay. Okay. So uh, you take her to recover, not recovery, the waiting room in front of the theater. So in waiting area in front of the theater, this is common question, ask it, not in recovery room. I, you, you, you see here, not in recovery. Maybe the students say recovery, so I write it. Yeah, I uh, many students tell about a special cart for children after removing the spleen. I think this is not true. I don't know from where they bring this idea. Uh, we don't have special cart. We have special cart for hemophilia, for some disease, but not for splenic, splenectomy. Many students speak about notify the child, the protection child surface to notify about child, the father behavior and the alcoholic drink. Okay, can or can say I will contact the social surface or we can contact uh, whatever is according to regulation of the hospital. And the end to summarize and uh, relax. This is one of the hard operation. But to, uh, what found the mistake is just be logic, uh, antibiotic, either prophylaxis or therapeutic, therapeutic, antibiotic, we speak about five day maximum, not one month, not forever, not nine months, not, uh, not, not this. Any comment? It's an excellent, excellent station. And uh, you did, you did do the acting very well. Usually the actor is standing, is not sitting up. Yes. Usually a lot of candidates insist, can you please sit down? I will let you know if you sit down. And some some people have say sit down more than seven or eight times. And this is bad performance. Yeah, he just explained to her that he's in theater. We don't allow to go. She's exactly. not allowed for her exactly. to go to inside the theater. Exactly. So to be and uh, the examiner doesn't ask you anything. We just to see you over nine minutes, how you manage an angry patient. And there are two, one examiner, one lay examiner, and they don't speak to you at all. They just take your number, please start, and you will be fired by the actor. What happened to my son? This usually trigger you off. You, you, you lose a lot of, a lot of uh, the uh, calm attitude, the logic and things like that. So please get trained about this station. It's very important. And uh, all the questions that Professor Shin Hariri mentioned about splenectomy are asked exactly as as it has been asked. So uh, good yeah. luck, this Dr. Nabhan. I'm sure you can do better. Hundreds of times, by the way, it's very common. Yes, it is very common okay. station, and uh, it's a killer station too. You are. All right. Okay. Yes. Uh, after that, we have a history taking, and again, it is important when I take a history. It is not important to reach the diagnosis. Yes. Diagnosis may be one mark, two mark. Yes. But if you forget to ask about social history, family history, past history, other system, allergy, five, five mark gun. Yes. Okay. And what the difference between who fail in this station, not fail in this station, they don't ask about this. Because all of you, Ask about pain, ask about pancreatitis, ask about renal colic, ask about whatever. But if you forget this because you don't have a time, so you lose five mark, you will be in critical situation. Yes. All right? Yes. Just remember, if the patient say any one of the family history died, so sorry for that, it's okay. Uh, don't ask a silly question. Don't end your conversation by what you expected from us to do. Okay? 
I don't know what happened in Egypt, but in Malaysia, it's the same. The there is, there is, there is, there is some courses, some, some courses they tell them to do that. Doctor, I am a teacher. I am a cooker. So how to ask me about medicine? I don't do it. It is your job. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. don't ask this. I think in Egypt, the actor is more uh, benign. So have no problem. Of course, it is. We don't give mark of this and we don't reduce mark, so no problem. But just in some students, they they believe that we are interested to hear that. I don't know why they have this idea, but it's okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, Very good. Uh, second, if the patient have pain, so you need to ask about site of pain, character of pain, what increase the pain, what decrease the pain, pain score, and... Uh, nausea, vomiting, fever, and any loss of weight, loss of appetite. If you ask about past history of the disease, don't say to the patient, I have any chronic disease, you need to enumerate. You have any chronic disease like diabetes, hypertension, uh, dyslipidemia, or is according to the case. Uh, if you ask about allergy, you need to ask about allergy to medication and the food. Okay? So uh, we just uh, see, uh, this is in general, but usually it's uh, 55 years old male, severe epigastric beer related to the back, after attending daughter wedding, and she drank a lot of alcohol, is usually drink but small amount on the weekend, he is married and have two children, live with his wife and children. Okay, so anyone need to start, Mr. Man. Iman, okay, Iman again. Hello. Uh, hello, doctor. Yes, uh, hello. I am uh, Mr. Man. Uh, I am Mr. Christopher. I'm 55 years old. Nice Yesterday, I was in a uh, wedding because my daughter wedding and I drink a lot of alcohol and have a pain and uh, I call the ambulance and they bring me here. Um, congr congratulations for your uh, your uh, daughter with you, firstly, and then I am uh, so sorry for uh, hearing about uh, your pain. Uh, okay. I know it would be frustrating. Could you please uh, tell me more about that? This pain in the uh, my middle of my abdomen, upper part of my abdomen, severe pain. Okay, is it going to uh, it's in your body? Uh, you mean radiated? Yes. Yes, it's radiated to my back. Uh, okay. Um, is there anything that makes it worse or increases pain? Uh, no, actually, it becomes less when I'm leaning forward and it becomes worse when I'm moving or coughing even. Okay. Is there anything that makes it uh, decrease this pain? No, nothing decreases, but in the hospital they give me some medication. Um, okay. Um, do you have any uh, change in color of your skin or your eye? Skin or eye? Uh, no. But okay. still you finish the pain or not yet? Um, I ask about still, the... Still pain score and uh, associating sign of pain. So pain score out of 1 to 10. So it is very severe pain. It is about 7. So finish pain first. Bed uh, score, okay. 7 or 10, and ask about nausea, vomiting. Oh, okay, go on. Okay. Uh, is there any nausea or vo or vomiting? Yeah, I have nausea and uh, vomiting twice. Uh, vomiting usually means severe pain. All right? No fever. Okay. What else? Okay. Uh, do you have any change in your stool uh, or your uh, urine color? A stool or urine color? Uh, no. Okay. Um, are you alcoholic? What you mean by alcohol? Drinking alcohol. Drinking. Alcoholic in English is bad word. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it is like uh, in Arabic, uh, sikir or something like that. It is, uh, I usually I drink about one or two cans of alcoholic beer every weekend. But because of the my uh, daughter, my daughter wedding, and I was happy, and uh, you know that's I social drinking, so I drink a lot this time. First time to drink a lot. I drink about nine cups. Okay. Um, do you have uh, any uh, treatment of uh, gold stone, gold bladder stone? Again? Do you have any gold treatment? Gold bladder, you mean? Yes, gold bladder stone. No. 
Uh, okay, is this pain uh, radiating to your uh, right shoulder? No. Uh, okay, are you have uh, any fever? Any what? Uh, any fever? No fever. Okay, uh, any weight loss? No weight loss. Uh, any sweating? No. Uh, do you have any chest pain? No chest pain. Okay, any short of breathing? No. Uh, any um, awareness of your heartbeat? No. Is this bear to uh, your left shoulder and the left uh, arm? No. Okay. Uh, are, uh, are you taking the, any medication for peptic ulcer? Uh, what is peptic ulcer mean? Uh, it's an uh, ulcer in your uh, stomach. No, I don't take any antacid. Uh, okay. Is there any? Uh, uh, do you have any uh, other medication? Uh, like, like for what? Like diabetes or asthma or hypertension. I have any chronic disease like diabetes, hypertension. Okay. okay. Uh, no. Do you have any surgery before? No. Uh, do you have any family history? Uh, my father died from heart attack. This is. Uh, okay. Uh, are you smoke, are you smoker? Uh, yes, I smoke five cigarettes per day for the last 20 years. Okay. Um, uh, I'm sorry for uh, your father. Uh, All right. Thank uh, you. Okay. Um, uh, do you want to summarize, uh, ask about anything or add anything to my conversation? Uh, no. Okay. So uh, you ask about social history. You ask about family history and the backup that his father died. So they sorry. You don't. You ask about allergy or forget? Uh, I forget to ask yeah, about. And so to ask about allergy, uh, uh, social allergy, family. Okay. Uh, it is difficult to ask. Is a bit, what is you ask about sweating? What is the value? I think that patient may have a pancreatic cancer. Any so pancreatic cancer is not necessary. Have a sweating, and just ask about loss of weight. You ask about peptic ulcer also. It's not logic to ask about peptic ulcer. You just uh, take antacid, take any medication, no problem. What's your diagnosis? Uh, it's acute pancreatitis. Ac why it is acute pancreatitis? Uh, because uh, it's in his epigastric and the... Uh, because the patient drink a lot of alcohol and typical pain of the epigastric radiated to back and relieved by leaning forward. So again, in any history, you have embassy, you have to take a history, of course, you take all item of the history. Don't forget in pain, pain is very important. Pain maybe have five mark, you ask about the site of pain, what increase the pain, what decrease the pain, radiation of the pain, pain score. You can ask about after that loss of weight, loss of appetite. Uh, of course, you ask about other organ, past history, medical history, family history, allergy, social history. Don't forget either, according to the station, summarize to the examiner or summarize to the patient. After that, in some station, we we'll ask you some question. In other station, we don't ask you some question. So we we'll ask you, for example, Dr. Iman again, if you, uh, what is the investigation you will do for this patient? I will do CT scan. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, relax, relax. Okay. Any, any investigation you start by? Routine labs. Yes, and start by four blood count. So started station. Of course, this is the diagnosis that started by full blood count and all this. After that, you can do anything. Okay? So don't forget, we start by full blood count. Looking for what? Uh, white blood cells, if there is any inflammation. Uh, look, I told you. So what else you need to do in the, in the blood test or lab test? Liver function. Uh, liver function. function, okay. <laughs> Especially bilirubin. What else? Uh, but function, uh, uh, renal function. Liver function, okay. What else? Uh, uh, renal More function. specific. Uh, renal function, uh, inflammatory markers, and also... Uh, inflammatory marker is not important in any diagnosis because it is high in acute amyloidocytis and acute pancreatitis and any infection. But more specific to pancreas is amylase and the lipase, and also blood sugar and the calcium and arterial blood gases. Okay, after that, we ask about chest X-ray. Why you ask about chest X-ray? Uh, to know if there is a ulcer and the perforation? 
can, but usually we make it as a baseline to exclude ARDS because ARDS is not occur early, but we need a baseline investigation like just X-ray, maybe this patient deteriorated after five days, so they have ARDS. Usually, it is very important to do that. It is very important treatment to give the patient oxygen. Of course, CT, what is the common cause of the acute pancreatitis in your country? Uh, it's gold stone. Gold bladder stone, what else? Um, it's um, uh, alcohol in Western... Uh, uh, alcohol intake and the most ERCB. Yes. So this is normal CT. Uh, this, is, uh, this is arrow indicate what? Um, indication of the... Um, it's a bank, it's an edema, edema of the bank. Enlarged pancreas, most probably edematous and the mild area of calcification. Can you tell me this is cut section in which level of the CT? This is in which level? So, um, uh, me, L1, L1. Okay, I don't agree with you. You see the reps here? Yes. So, if have a reps, so T12. If no reps, it's so L1. Okay. How to know the prognosis of this pancreas, a banker, acute pancreatitis? By uh, galostoscopy. Uh, no, no. How to know severity of it or how to know it is moderate or severe or something? How to know that? Uh, uh, other scoring of the pancreas. What score you usually use? The easy score is Emory score or Glasgow score. Just write the word pancreas. B for PO2, A for age, N for neutrophil, C for calcium, R for renal function test, E for liver enzyme, not amylase and lipase, A for acidosis and albumin, and S for sugar. So it is eight item. If three is abnormal, it is mean moderate prognosis. Okay, how to treat this patient? How to treat acute pancreatitis? Um, uh, firstly, admission means uh, ICU admission, ITU admission. And yes, I give admission in ICU and? I will give the patient uh, fluids by inserting... No, before body. that, why is this patient come to you? Uh, because severe pain, so I give him well. analgesia. So first, of course, admission to ICU or HDU, give analgesia, and after that, fluid, how to monitor this fluid? Uh, by a urinary uh, catheter and the CV line, CVB line. Okay, it can be urinary, can be CVB, okay. So you give, what else you need to give to the patient? I will give him antibiotic if there is a... An well, it is controversy, but can to avoid secondary infection, what else? Okay. Um, and give oxygen or no oxygen? Yes, I will give him oxygen. Okay, and, uh, you give oxygen, you give intravenous fluid. Of course, I don't speak about this octreotide or somatomidine because this is still under, it is, of course, we're given, but it is not the ideal treatment. It is not sure is a good treatment or not. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, this is again about IC. <laughs> I read the two references for IC. It is one patient expectation, general practitioner. Okay. All right. All right. So again, in in this history taken or whatever the history you take, uh, it is important to ask about other system. Don't waste your time to asking something is not related like night sweating. Uh, of course, the fever is important, but don't ask uh, some student, ask, do you take any recreation drug? Or uh, some student ask, uh, in case of cancer, about sexual function, or all this is not, not important, is not related to these topics. Okay? Uh, any question anyone need to speak? We, after that, we have one clinical station. Anyone have? Yes? For how long we will get... Antibiotic after uh, spray to me because I don't. Uh, no, uh, okay. Forget spray to me. If you make good blood up, call it stick to me. For how long do you give antibiotic? Mm, uh, for a few days after the surgery. Yeah, uh, three days, three doses, prophylaxis dose. What you will do? Um. um I think Usually, we give three doses. It is a prophylaxis. Okay. 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 So it is the same. This is clean operation. 
what what you see or what we discussed before or written in some Indian book about giving forever. It is the old history before vaccination of Nemo vaccine. Nemo vaccine is discovered recently. Actually, it is not called the Nemo vaccine. It is Nemo vaccine. Uh, so it is trivalent vaccine. Okay. So it is very important. By the way, because Egyptian is majority, the two famous vaccine in medicine, like human papilloma virus vaccine and the rotavirus vaccine, is uh, discovered by Dr. Adil Mahmoud. He died many years ago, and he is from Qasr al Ain. He's working in America, not in Egypt, of course. <laughs> By the way, he's. Uh, this is very nice he's information. Did you know that? Yeah, but it, you know that his uh, Bill Gates, he, after he died, he speak about him. Uh, the last station in the clinical, which is very, very, very shocking, is the submandibular gland. And again, usually the patient have no uh, swelling. And usually I tell the student, you are lucky the swelling is disappear in the morning. And at the end, it's supposed to be saladenitis or infection because the swelling disappears. But we ask you how to examine the patient. So any volunteer. Some mandibular scheme in the last two exam in Malaysia. We we see next week what happened also. We can we tell you. Dr. Anyone? Muhammad Nabhan, yes, he raised his hand. Okay, all right, can. All right. So, uh, usually the patient is like this, have swelling or no swelling. So you're looking and just one inspection, you can tell me what you are looking for. Okay, okay. I'll start. After the and all this. Okay, my name is Muhammad Nabhan, I'm a surgical doctor. Today I have been asked to uh, examine a swelling in your neck. Yes, so yes. this includes looking and feeling, touching your neck. Uh, is that okay for you? Yes, can. Okay, I'll start by uh, uh, looking at the swelling to see the size, size shape. And uh, the swelling no, no, seems can't like describe. so. It is the ah, okay. side in, in which area? So, this is which area? So this is swelling in the uh, right side of the neck and the anterior triangle. Okay. Of course, in this station, in any clinical station, we touch your hand. But in history taking, you don't need to touch your hand. Okay. So of course, you wash your hand during an inspection. Then permission. After that, side size shape, dilated vein. They have a little dilated vein, and uh, any other swelling or no other swelling. What else after inspection? What you need to do? Okay, I'll ask the patient to open his mouth to see. Uh... No, no. It is uh, you. You need to inspect the first. Okay, can you to see what? Yeah, I will see the dental case. Okay, and the season. Uh, yeah, and see the uh, submandibular gland that's on, underneath. Uh, where is the, usually uh, submandibular gland duct lay? Yeah, just uh, under the mouth, uh, the, the tongue. The, the tongue. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay, or right. so what is common? You have submandibular stone, common than barotid duct stone. Uh, um, uh, what? Why it is some mandibular stone is common than barotid? We don't see barotid swelling, but we uh, we have some mandibular swelling. Why? Infection might go to to bird, uh... No, because the secretion in barotid is serous, and in uh, submandibular is mucus secreted, and it is against the gravity. All right. Okay. What else you need to look for? By the patient? Dental case, uh, dental case, uh, okay, we we'll finish the dental care conduct. What else? Uh, I will see if uh, there is a, a subarbitral examination. Okay, so uh, no, you first palpate the swelling, like hot, no, tender, and all this. You palpate the swelling first. Okay. After that, go to by manual examination. So first is not hot, not tender, 7 by 5 centimeter, uh, well-defined edge, uh, all this. After, so first, first is the mandibular gland. After that, do by manual examination. What is the value of by manual examination? Differentiate with some mandibular gland or if it's larger than What to differentiate? Uh, the some mandibular gland and if it's larger than not. No, no, if it is superficial, what it could be? A lymph node. Lymph node and usually multiple, it is inside, so it is salivary gland itself. What else? 
After that, what else you need to do? Uh, examination of uh, the cellular lymph nodes. Okay, so what is the name of the lymph node? You need to enumerate me the, the, the name. Uh, okay, so uh, the upper, uh, upper uh, superficial cervical and the lower superficial cervical, upper deep cervical, and uh, periauricular, postauricular, and occipital. Okay, so if you make the subventral, submandibular, auricular, most auricular, occipital, upper, lower, cervical, and pre-laryngeal, pre-tracheal, and supramandibular sometimes. But here is just neck, no problem. Okay, what else you need to do? Thank the patient. Okay, thank the patient. All right, so this is easy. If you have the swelling, and I tell you from the beginning, it is in some mandibular region, so first, no need to ask the patient to drink. Okay. No need to ask the patient to protrude his tongue, because it is not a thyroid. Okay. Okay, because we tell you it is in some mandibular region. If it is a station, examine the neck. Okay, so you, you need to ask the patient to swallow. If you don't find the swelling, ask the patient to protrude his uh, tongue. And after that, you need to examine palpate the thyroid gland. If it's normal, or here, palpate the submandibular salivary gland. If it is normal, you palpate it. After that, by manual palpation in submandibular salivary gland and uh, lymph node. You need to enumerate the name of the lymph node. No need to examine tongue to protrude it for hypoglossal nerve. No need to ask the patient to blow to see the buccal branch of the facial. Uh, no need to put uh, some sour or taste as a sensation over the anterior side of the tongue of lingual nerve because if this complication happened, it is usually iatrogenic or post surgery. Very rare to have a cancer, and suppose they have a cancer, so can affect only, I, I think, not affect all this nerve. It's usually uh, affected by surgery. Uh, not, it is atrogenic means that induced by doctor. Okay. Of course, inspection by patient by manual examination. Don't miss to examine the lymph node. If you miss to examine the lymph node, usually the examiner asks you which other area you need to examine. If they examine, you examine breast lipoma and they ask you which other area you need to examine, you mean that the lymph node. Lymph node examination is okay. Uh, I see in India some students say, I go to the back of the patient to examine the lymph node, of course you go to the back, so we know that you go to the back. So no need to explain it. Of course, this is nerve, no need to describe. Uh, that's it. After that, and it is important, uh, suppose the patient have a stone, how to diagnose? Uh, making X-ray and some mandibular gland. Yeah, X-ray or some mandibular artery sound. Don't say cellulose. We don't. I don't see it in my life, by the way. Uh, X-ray here. We can call it panoramic X-ray. It is a special machine, a rotatory machine, ultrasound. They can. Cellulogram is not done nowadays. Cellulogram like fistulogram. Nowadays in very inner fistula, we don't do fistulogram. Uh, we do MRI or endo inner ultrasound. How to treat if the stone in the duct, how to treat the stone in the uh, gland. Start by stone in the gland, how to treat it? In the gland by submandibular gland excision. Excision, and the incision according to the new guideline where? Uh, it's uh, four centimeters below the, the, the Okay, mandibular. four or five centimeters below the angle, although it is bad cosmotic. So why you make it lower uh, in the new guideline? for fear of uh, injury to the marginal and uh, marginal uh, marginal mandibular is injured what happened uh, dropping of the saliva from the angle of angle, the dro dropping of the angle of the mouth not necessary saliva okay. if dropping of saliva we call it drooling so have dropping and the droning dropping is means the angle is dropped so right. but i think it not affect much the saliva if the stone in the duct what you will do uh, we, we will do excision of the uh, of the duct and leave it open. It is not excision, it is open. And lay, leave it open, this is opening, if you open a duct, we call it marcivalization. Or okay. open the duct, not excision of the duct. Excision means remove the duct, we don't remove the duct. We just open, we remove the stone and leave it open. Okay? 
we don't remove it by cellophane. Till now, we don't remove by cellophane. Okay. So again, if the stone in the duct uh, opens the duct, of course, when you open the duct to give anesthesia to the lingual nerve, and this anesthesia can cause numbness of the anterior third of the tongue or anterior two third of the tongue. If it's in the gland, we remove the gland, and nowadays we make it for something five something below it, just to avoid. This is the duct. This is a historical cellogram, by the way. And the stone is like date shape or date shell, or date, this is uh, inside the date. Okay? Mm. So it is easy, by the way. So again, this exam, OSCE, usually what we have idea about OSCE, it is easy to pass and it is easy to fail. Uh, the who fail in exam, usually the excellent student. If you have, for example, senior student and uh, houseman, houseman usually pass because they have little knowledge, he don't speak much. But if you have many knowledge, you, you, you speak a lot and you lost the time and you forget the end. Don't do something funny. I was in Cairo and the nice girl from Kasraini and uh, she examined the abdomen and she smelled the patient mouse. Uh, she's very beautiful and the patient becomes scared from her because she smells his mouth and uh, at the end after she finished I tell why you smell I see I looking for fetal hepatica because we teach that in Kasralaini so uh, this is okay but it's not done in exam uh, for British examiners they think that she is crazy of course it is not logic to bring a patient with fetal hepatica or liver cell failure in exam so don't do something funny or unnecessary, okay? Uh, don't do extra, don't be so clever. If you are so clever, it is easy to fail. If you have more, more, more data, it is easy to, to fail. So just a simple. We don't, the examiner is normal practice people. What you do in practice, you can tell us in exam. Don't say something funny, something advanced, something we don't hear about it and say it is written in book. Okay. Any comment, anything, anyone you need? Uh, yes, anyone I have, come uh, from uh, I have exam? a question. I have a question. Uh, uh, about the abdominal examination, if uh, I have a, a patient having suspected cholecystitis or acute abdominitis, uh, should I just uh, start with the uh, nine quadrants of the abdomen, then I go to the liver and uh, spleen You expected to bring acute abdominitis to an exam? No. Okay, we don't bring any patient in pain, and even if he mimic pain, he's not in pain. So examine normal way, inspection, okay. palpation, percussion, or area, and before you touch him, I will try to be gentle. Yeah. I know that you are in pain. I yeah. will try to be gentle. Yeah, they, they are always... But don't, yeah. don't say I don't touch the patient because the patient is in pain. Yes. And of course, you know, he's an actor. Yes, he, he is an actor. You need to take permission. I will examine your abdomen. If you feel any pain, let me know and I will stop. And you start the area far away.